Hello everyone and welcome to my channel MI Tutorials. In this tutorial, I will be teaching you two important DAX functions which is same period last year and parallel period. I'm going to explain when you should use which DAX function and what are the differences between these two functions. So let's get started with this tutorial. So first of all, let's take a look at the function same period last year. Now let's say I have a sample table over here wherein I have my uh, year month and total sales column over here and let's say in the year 2021 january you would want to identify the sales amount for the previous year which means that 2020 january what was the sales amount in the same month but last year how do you do that so this is where the same period last year comes into play i'm going to come here so before i start creating the measure over here let me show you the data model that i have it's a very simple sales table that i have over here which is connected to my calendar table now if you are not aware how to create a calendar table there's a video on my channel please check that out I'll also leave a link to that particular video in the description here and so what I'll now do is I'm gonna come here I'm gonna create a new measure I'm gonna call this measure as same period last year is equals to I'm going to write the calculate function and I want to calculate my total sales and I already have created a measure here which is basically sum of the sales amount column and then I'm going to type in the same period last year function over here and it only accepts one argument in this case. I'm going to enter the date field from my calendar table. I'm going to close the bracket here and press enter. And now when I bring in this particular measure into my table, you will start seeing the values here for last year. So like I said, in the year 2021, I'm getting the January sales for the last year, which is 122497. Likewise, if I come down over here, 2023 August, the sales is 256089. That is exactly what we have over here. Now we're not seeing any values here because we don't have any data prior to 2020. So that's why these rows are blank over here now this also works on the row context over here for example i have the month filter over here now let's say i want to bring in the quarter as well into this hierarchy i'm going to right click here click on show all levels and then get rid of day and now you see that we have quarter as well so for example let me get rid of month here and now we are comparing 2021 quarter with the 2020 quarter so the, the result that you see over here 435683 is the quarter one amount of the year 2020 so this basically works on the row context if i get rid of quarter over here this will now start comparing the sales for the previous year so this was about the same period last year function and now let's look at the parallel period function and how this will help us i'm going to type in parallel period is equals to i'm going to start typing in calculate as usual with the total sales because we want to get the total sales amount followed by a comma and then on the next line over here i'm going to use the parallel period function now this accepts multiple arguments the first argument here is to enter the date field which is the date field from my calendar table comma and then we have the number of intervals i'm going to enter minus one for now before i start explaining this in a while followed by comma and then there are three arguments over here which you can choose from you either want month or by quarter or by year so let's select year for now i'm going to close the bracket here twice and press enter and now let me bring in the parallel period measure that we created into our table so as you see over here the same period last year values are exactly the same here for the first two years for the last year however it is not now the reason that the numbers are not similar or same here for the last year is because let me bring in the all levels over here and if we look at the data here for the 2023, I only have data until August. Now, what the parallel period is doing is it is calculating the total sales amount from January to August and returning the amount over here. Whereas this parallel period is looking at the entire year and returning the amount. Now, if I get rid of this over here, this basically is checking the values here from January to August and returning the amount here for the January to August. And this one here is returning the total amount for that particular year. Now, let's go back to the measure that we created, which is parallel period. 
and we entered minus 1 here minus 1 meaning that we want to go back one year and calculate the sales now if i enter positive over here positive 1 and commit to this dax over here what this is now doing is it is fetching us the value of the next year now if you look at 2020 over here it is now fetching us the value here in the year 2020 as 4977512 likewise it is fetching the value for the next year right now if i come back here and change this value here to minus 2 this is basically we are going two years back and now in the year 2022 since in the year 2021 we don't we cannot go back two years but in the year 2022 we can go back two years which is the sales amount of the year 2020 and that is exactly what is being displayed over here and now let's say we looked at the year right now let's say you want to do this by months and what i can now do is i'm going to simply bring in show all levels over here and have this until month and now if you go back here you see that the sales amount is repeating here for the entire year because we need to change the argument in this case instead of year i'm going to change this to minus one oops sorry i'm going to change this to minus one and change this year to month and then commit to this tax and let's go back and see what happens now the earlier example we went back one whole year but in this case we are going back just one month in this case february january we don't have any data prior to january so we have blank over here but in the month of february we do have the sales data available for the month of january that is exactly what is being displayed over here so if you scroll down for example 2020 may it is now showing us the value here for the previous month which is april the value here is 24773 that is exactly what is being displayed over here and this function here is going to help you in calculating the difference between the current month versus the last month and if you want to calculate the percentage increase or decrease based on the sales amount when compared to last month or previous month you can do that and likewise the parallel period here the argument you can change this let's say you want to look at minus three in this case you want to go back three months prior and look at or calculate the amount so for the month of april over here it is now showing you the data for the month of january likewise if you come to uh, april over here it will show you the data for the month of february and then there is another argument here which is by quarter you can compare values by quarter as well now, so to summarize the parallel period gives you more functionality to choose how you want to get the data by month or by quarter or by year and you can also choose to decide how many intervals you want to go back you want to go back one year you want to go back two years you want to go back three years or you want to go back one month two months three months etc that functionality is available within the parallel period however when you look at the same period last year this function can only compare the data let's say if you are in the month context you can compare the sales amount for that month with the last year sales amount you cannot have the intervals defined in this case you cannot go back one year two years three years you can only go back one year and it will compare that particular period with the previous year period so these were the differences between the same period last year and the parallel period function. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. You've learned something new today. Please consider subscribing to my channel for more such tutorials.